Hello and welcome to this new EasyRed 2 modding SDK tutorial. Today we are going to create a custom props with destructibility. Normally this procedure works well for buildings, but also other kind of smaller props can of course have their own destructibility system. So taking the example of a building, let's notice how this building is made out of two parts. We also have a variant of the two parts, which is the destroyed version. You could fix that later in Unity but possibly make sure to have the scale of your building respecting the metric unit of Blender where one unit is equal to one meter. Also notice how each intact part has the same origin position as their destroyed version. We can in fact move the destroyed version on top of the intact version. That's gonna make the procedure easier later on. Notice again how the pivot points are in the same position. Here we also have the LOD version of our building, so we got two parts with both LOD version for the intact and destroyed version. We're gonna rename this also to LOD and call because we are gonna use the LOD version in this case also as collision version. That's because these LOD version are simple enough and their destruction will be quite performant if they use this version of the model as collision model. Let's also move these models on the same position of the original building model. So now you can notice how every part has the same pivot position. For the right side of our building, aka part two, we can actually move the pivot position a little bit on the right. So now you can see how all the part two has their own pivot point, which is different from the pivot point used by all the part one. You can select all the meshes pressing A, and then click Ctrl A to apply the rotation and scale to make sure they are in the proper Blender standard. We can now export our model going to export FBX. Make sure to select the proper folder. For example, now I'm gonna create a folder inside the asset folder of the modding SDK called my building mod. Remember to set the scale to FBX unit scale and apply transform. Let's give a proper name to our FBX and click export FBX. Now inside Unity, we're gonna see our model properly imported. We can extract the materials, so we can later set up the textures. We can put the building model in the hierarchy, so we can take a look at it. And as you can see, here we got all the individual parts in the correct position, just like we saw inside Blender. So we got the intact version, the destroyed version, the LOD of the destruction, and the LOD of the intact version for the part one, and also everything for the part two as well. So we want now to import the textures. Let's copy them inside the same folder. Now we can take all individual extracted material, set up the textures, change a bit their own parameters. We can do them with each individual texture we imported. As you can see, they looks great. So now let's set up the building correctly. To do so, remove the example we just put in the hierarchy. Go back to the project folder where we have the FPX. Right click on it. And choose easy red two mods building template. From here, as you can see, we got all the parts we saw a moment ago. But we also have a few new scripts such as the LOD group, the destructible manager and the door register. As you can see, the destructible manager is linking all the destructible parts of the building. In this template there are two, but we can create more. Each destructible part has a destructible building phase script that you can see in the inspector when you select the destructible part. And the destructible phase script holds all the information for the destruction, such as the life of the part, what objects can damage it, like bullet, fire, explosions, and the minimum penetration for a bullet to be able to damage the part. For example, if we don't want low caliber weapon to damage it, and here we also have the status phases, 
which are all the individual destructible levels of the building. Normally you only have the intact and the destroyed level, but you can have middle levels, for example, for the building being not completely intact, but at the same time not completely destroyed, so just partially destroyed. In this placeholder we have only the two intact and destroyed level. You can easily create more levels. And as you can see, at the beginning only the intact level is enabled in the hierarchy, while every other levels, so here for example the destroyed level is disabled in the hierarchy, because when the building spawn, we only will have the intact part being active, as the destruction will happen later on during the gameplay. Basically, when the building will get destroyed, the intact part will be automatically disabled in game and the destroyed part will be enabled. So now we want to assign each of our part to be parented to the exact destruction or intact level. So if a part is intact, will be parented to its intact level and if a part is destroyed, will be parented to the destroyed level. So now let's assign the intact part 1 to the first intact phase and the destroyed part 1 to the first destroyed phase. We also want to put the LOD of the destruction in the same destroyed phase and the LOD of the intact part 1 in the same intact phase, just drag and dropping it to parent it. Let's do the same with the part 2. So let's parent the destroyed version and the intact version to the relative parents. Now, as you can see, if we disable the intact part and we enable the destroyed part, we will see how the destruction will happen in game. But let's keep the intact part enabled and the destroyed part disabled. We can now assign the LOD level to enable the low poly version at distance and show the high poly version when close by. To do so, when selecting the root game object, we will have the LOD group script. We can remove the third LOD level called LOD2 because we only have two LOD parts. So let's drag and drop every single high poly version of the model to the LOD0, including the destroyed high poly version, even if it's parented to a disabled object. And finally, let's assign all the low poly version to the LOD1 level. As you can see, if now we move the camera far and near the building, we're gonna see the LOD version switching between the high poly and the low poly version. Let's adjust the distance we want the low poly version to appear. And finally, let's talk about collisions. As you can see, when we enable selection wire, we can see that the high poly version of our building has many more polygons than the low poly version. So I would recommend using the low poly version as the collision model, just like we mentioned before when inside Blender. So to do so, let's select each individual low poly model in our hierarchy and let's right click on it and choose Easy Red 2 Mods, Buildings, Add Collision to Damageable Part. Doing like that, we will spawn a few scripts in the selected objects, including the building impact, which will receive the impact from explosions, projectiles and collisions, and the mesh collider component, which will hold the mesh of the collision for our game object part, which will be created starting from the low poly version of our building part. There is also a way to visualize the collision, disabling the mesh render component, but leaving the mesh collider enabled. Let's revert the mesh collider and let's see the same thing in the destroyed version. As you can see the LOD is working and now if I select the low poly version and I disable the mesh render I will see the collision for it. Notice how the collision is only on the low poly version object and not in the high poly version. And in any case make sure that you don't have more than one mesh collider for each part. So here we got the high and the low poly version of the model and we want the mesh collider to be only in one of the two parts. If you have the mesh collider in both the high poly and the low poly version, you wanna remove one of them. So finally, 
let's make sure everything is correct and let's make sure that only the intact parts are enabled while the destroyed parts are disabled. Let's create a folder where to save our building configuration. Let's call this folder, for example, prefabs. And let's drag and drop our building inside the folder. Now we can assign our building to an asset bundle. For example, let's call this asset bundle for this mod, my building mod. You might need to save the scene with Ctrl S or with file save. Let's select a folder where to save the scene. And finally, let's choose Mod Menu, Mod Compiler. Here we can select the asset bundle we just created with our mod inside, which is my building mod. We can add a title to our mod, a description, the change logs. We have to subscribe to the end user license agreement. We can check the, the building template is correctly placed inside our mod because it appears in this menu. We can set the visibility of the workshop mod and we can start the upload. Remember to have Steam open during this process, otherwise the upload to the workshop will fail. Once we have our mod completely uploaded to the workshop, we can subscribe to it, wait for it to be downloaded. We can now start the game go to mission editor and create a custom map or a custom mission. For example, let's create a map called testing my building. We can now click on add prop, go to our mod and select the building we made into our mod. And as you can see, it spawned correctly. We can change the destruction status, which is gonna normally change when the building gets damaged or destroyed during gameplay and so the building is working properly this is all for this tutorial so congratulations for creating your first destructible building or your first destructible prop